Hey guys, welcome back to Growing at the Beach. Uh, today we're going to do an update on the One Wheel GT. What's great and what's not so great. Um, so, number one, let me just tell you this thing is so badass. Really long range. I've gone on a few rides. I literally haven't gotten the battery lower than 70%. I usually can only do about seven or eight miles and then I need, I need to just take a break because my back's hurting or I'm just tired. Um, so yeah, it's amazing when it's working great, but it's not working great right now. Uh, it's a couple problems that I noticed as soon as I, when I took my first ride. So there's something called ghosting. Um, anyone who rides a one wheel or is familiar with one wheels knows what ghosting is. Ghosting is basically when your board just takes off without you. So there's a few ways to dismount the one wheel. Um, there's the two footed jump off. So you're on right here, both feet at the same time. The one wheel should stop as soon as you do that. There's another way, uh, this is the way I generally get off of my one wheel, which is called the heel lift. So you got both feet on your wheel. If you lift your front heel, it will deactivate one of the sensors, dropping the board down. The board should stop then. So the problem I've been having is when I go to jump, or when I did do a two foot of jump off, the board kept going. That's called ghosting. That's really scary. This board is 34 pounds. You can imagine it can get up to 35 easily without a rider on it if the sensors are fully um, depressed. Um, very dangerous, very scary. I love riding trails. I live by the ocean. Uh, I like being near water when I ride. Um, obviously this thing, if it's ghosting, boom, it's $2,500 just launching into the ocean. So we don't want that. So anyway, uh, I was talking to a buddy of mine about it, and uh, especially because I couldn't get it to deactivate when I was just trying to get off of it. Uh, and he was saying, you know, you should definitely reach out to Future Motion. Shout out to Jay. Good looking out, Jay. Um, so I did that. I reached out to Future Motion. I called him up. I let him know what the situation was, and they said, no problem. It sounds like you just got a faulty front sensor pad. So just to go into detail real quick about this front sensor pad, the way it works. So. There's two sensors. There's one on this side and there's one on this side. Um, the way that the board is activated is when both sensors are compressed, boom, the board will activate right here. So when you want to deactivate the board, releasing the pressure off one side of the sensor pad should deactivate the board and the board should fall. Well, that was not happening with me. When I was trying to do my heel lift, I got to the point of where I was lifting so high for so long and it wasn't deactivating, I kind of just started putting my foot on the full edge of the front foot pad, still it wasn't deactivating. So that was making me a little bit nervous, obviously, because you know, you got to get off, sometimes you got to get off quick, and you, again, you don't want the board ghosting, super dangerous, takes a lot of the fun out of it. The one time I did do a double uh, jump off, when I first noticed the problem, which was the first day, I did a two footed jump off, and the board took off. I went to grab it and it's so heavy, it fully tweaked my shoulder. Um, I still have sort of a pinched nerve going on in my shoulder right now, which is super annoying. Um, kept me out of the ocean for a few days. But anyway, enough about getting old. <laughs> um, so the fix for this, like I said, should be a new front foot pad. Um, I did get that in today. A little box here from Future Motion. So it comes with the hardware needed as well as the tool needed. Um, here's your front foot pad right here. So in order to do this repair, what we do is we take off the bottom bumper and then uh, that'll allow access to the two screws, which are right up here at the top, um, in order to install the new bumper. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. Just slide it in, pop the screws in, and hopefully this fixes the problem. So just so you guys know, if you're having a problem with your boards ghosting, you know, don't go crazy on social media and say I bought a piece of junk because this thing is so badass. Like I said, just contact Future Motion. They will send you the correct parts or you could send your board back depending on what kind of issue you have and they're super on top of it, so. All right guys, the first step here is to take the screws out of your fender or your delete plate should have four in there and and make sure when you put things on your one wheel you don't want to over tighten 
Um, and I believe the rails are made of aluminum. It's kind of a softer metal, so don't want to over torque your screws. So just tight, not over tight. Go. We'll just release the fender. She's a little bit dirty. Always a good time to clean your accessories and your parts anytime you're doing a repair on your wheel. Okay guys, so after removing your fender delete or your fender, whichever you roll with, uh, the next thing you want to do is one, two, three, four screws on the front bumper. I've already taken those out and you just want to grab it right here. They recommend not grabbing it right here. Uh, there's a it's kind of an overlap of the other plastic that's in there. So just grab it right here. It slides out very easily. Voila. You can see get the access to the inner workings of the machine once you get down to this point. Uh, this is the, um, the controller, I believe. The battery's gonna be on this side. So once you've got the front fender pulled off, there's gonna be two screws, one here and one here. Those are the screws that will release your front foot pad. So this one screw one. And then once you got those two screws in, you should be able to flip her over. Okay. And then there'll be two screws in the top, closest to the wheel. And these are going to be the last two screws. To release this front foot pad. There we go. Now we can lift up the foot pad, and you'll notice the foot pad will be connected by a wire. I'll show you guys this. So there's going to be a wire right there that runs into the controller. So we'll go easy on the next step. I'll show you how to disconnect that. Okay guys, so once we get to this step right here, we're going to need to use the little tool that they gave with us. Uh, it's sort of a locking key for the, 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 um, the plug that plugs in from the foot pad to the controller. Uh, it's kind of a pain to get on there, i got to be honest, it was a little more of a pain than I thought. I mean, it wasn't like impossible, it was just a little annoying because the wire is very short. Uh, you want to go counterclockwise when you're loosening it. it took me probably three or four swoops. Uh, half swoops I would say to get it and then um, once that ring is touching flush with the rest of that plug it should pull right out just again to show you right here let's see if I can get a close-up for you right here so this is the piece and this is the tool it's gonna go on that piece so yeah there we go So now we got it taken apart. Now it's time to put the new parts on. Hopefully it goes as smoothly <laughs> as it did taking the parts off. All right guys, let's get it. All right guys, now that we have the front foot pad connected to the controller, um, we can then add, put these, pop these screws right back in here. And remember, like I said before, go easy on these screws. You don't wanna press, you don't wanna keep screwing them in too far just just until they're tight 
No need to be extra tanked. There we go. Alright, next step is we're going to flip her over. So from here we are going to add the screws that go into the bottom of the foot pad. Just two of them, one on each side. They really do make these things amazing to, you know, for people who aren't super handy. <laughs> to go in and just accessorize, take it apart, add different pieces, do the repairs. So there we go on that one. Just until it's tight, voila. Okay, from here we're gonna add the, the bumper back on, the front bumper. So it just slides in. You can see the little notches right there. Voila. Also, anytime you're putting a bumper or anything on the one wheel that requires more than two screws, you know, like if it's a four screw piece, don't, uh, don't tighten all the screws as you go. You know, you, what you want to do is put one screw in halfway, another screw in halfway, another screw in halfway, and so on. Uh, that way you get all lined up. Sometimes if you tighten the first screw, then your second or third screw will not line up to the hole. So just something to consider. I'm sure we've all run into that when taking care of our wheels. Okay guys, uh, so we're pretty much done with everything. We have installed our front bumper. Something to remember uh, with this final step, <laughs> I swear every time I do it, I do it wrong the first time. So. Something to remember, there's two sets of screws for these uh, front bumper. There are two small screws and then there are two medium sized screws. The small screws go right here. The longer screws or medium sized screws go right at the nose of the board. Just something to remember, it's gonna save you probably five minutes from having to go through and unscrew them. Also another reason why you only wanna screw things in halfway. So, take this tiny guy right here, the full screw right there. So I'm really hoping this fixes the problem because, uh, like I said, I, I really am enjoying this thing so much. It's so freaking fun. You know, I have a lot of uh, back issues from surfing every day for so many years. I'm in my late 40s now, so at least 30 years of way too much surfing. And I definitely feel like the one wheel strengthens my back a little bit. Um, you know, I have to take days off of surfing. I can't surf every day anymore. Uh, it kills me that I can't do that, but I take days off. I do yoga every day. That helps a lot. Um, but I really feel like, you know, doing this, riding this one wheel, just strengthening my back. Uh, definitely hasn't completely taken away the back pain, but if, I don't, if I'm not riding it and I'm just surfing, you know, I surfed yesterday and it's really sunny today, so I'm definitely gonna hit the water today, but you just get you just getting old sucks. Back pain sucks. But my best thing I can tell you guys is just stay active. Don't stop moving. Uh, keep surfing. Even if you have to take four days off, go on that fifth day, you know. Um, and and get something an alternative to the thing that you love. Like a one wheel. Again, One Wheel GT is amazing. I love it. Um, I haven't had any problems except for this sensor issue. So um, anyway, I'm gonna head down to the beach and catch some waves. Um, I'm gonna go ride this later today, definitely tomorrow. And um, I'll come back with another review if I have any issues or if there's anything that's just mind blowing that you guys just have to know about. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, you know, give me a like, uh, please subscribe. That really helps out. If by any chance you're interested in, in learning how to cultivate medicinal herbs, I got tons of videos on that and a lot more coming in the future. So really easy to follow along, save yourself a ton of money, and grow your own.
I mean, it is so freaking cheap to grow so much quantity. Um, yeah, so you got your exercise medicine, and then you got your real medicine. That's going to do it today, guys. Uh, really, again, I, I want to say thanks so much for tuning in, and um, we'll see you on the next one. Peace out, Gromies.